Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining uh, the Facebook Live, our first Facebook Live with Dr. Sandy. Hi, Dr. Sandy. Thank you for joining us today. Can you give Absolutely. us a little bit of info or probably a background? Sure, sure. I'm Dr. Sandy Avalith, and I have been an optometrist for three decades. Oh my gosh, I'm that old. I've done everything from corporate optometry to owning a private practice for 15 years, and we had uh, subspecialties in the practice. I've worked for ophthalmologists. I've done it all. And I also love the business side of doing a practice. So I actually started a second company called Kiss Your Web, and it's a digital marketing company. And I've sort of gone from doing websites to teaching others how to look at their websites and how to look at their social media and all of the online marketing they do. So I consult for practices uh, to make sure that they know what's going on and, and if they even have to hire somebody, what to look for when they hire somebody to make their own online presence. So that's pretty much what I do and why we're here. Yeah, so I, I want to just give some people some info in the background. Uh, Dr. Sandy joined the Facebook group, Corporate Optometry, and we kind of just hit it off talking, chatting. Um, just talking about business aspects, how to grow a business, different things. So kind of hit it off. So, and, the, and then, you know, I love the information that she had. So I kind of wanted to share her information with everybody, her expertise, because she has a lot to offer and a different perspective in the industry. And, um, you know, I wanted to talk about website and, and things that people can do to fix their websites. What are some things that you think ODs can do themselves to grow sure. their business or website? Absolutely. Well, the first thing I always do is is sort of go foundationally. Even though we're in a local demographic and we're typically serving patients that are in our location, our zip code, et cetera, I always tell doctors to make sure that they actually write out three to five ideal patient. Um, we call them either avatars or just their ideal patient um, um, sort of a profile. You'll kind of be surprised that it's not just the demographic that you need to find out about them, but it's also their psychographic. What are their buying styles? What are their buying habits? Um, you and I were kind of speaking behind the scenes that private and corporate uh, patients buy a little differently. So it's important to be able to speak their language to know what your ideal patient, and it could be a real one, you know, that favorite patient that um, spends extra money on extra products, spends extra time, spends extra, uh, you know, um, money in their specialties that you might offer. So it's that ideal patient that comes back every year, they refer other patients, and you just want more of them. So I actually have a, a, a little form that uh, I'll you know send you the link so that we can put that in the comments, but it's basically to define who that ideal patient is. And that's sort of the foundation. And then what we do is move on to the website is just to start by auditing your own website. You know, I, we said that list five things that you can do to fix your website or what optometrists can do to look at their website, but there, there's a ton of them. And we can certainly go back and forth because I know that you know a lot about this too. But really the first thing is that you want to make sure that your website is set up so that when patients are looking for someone in your town, now I happen to be in Tampa and, you know, if someone types in Tampa eye doctor or Tampa optometrist, I'm not practicing right now, but if they did and I was working on my own site, I'd make sure that I was in the top three listings. And we call that the three pack. And the way that you do that is you optimize both the listing and on Google. And a lot of people don't even know that they should be listing their site on Google. And you just go to Google My Business and start setting up your uh, profile there. If you've set it up and you've kind of let it go and haven't nurtured it and done anything with it, Go ahead and go there now and audit it and take a look at it and make sure that you're optimizing. You're putting all the text in there that you can. You're putting as much as you can categories. I think they allow three right now. So you could put some subspecialties there. Um, make sure you're optimizing it with photos, photos of you, photos of the team, photos of the practice. Um, you certainly want to stay away from stock photos. And the same thing goes for your website. You want to make sure that you're getting honest reviews on Google. That, you know, there are ways to do it. I, I won't spend time today. Maybe we could touch that in a later time. But to really get those reviews, it's very important. You know how you shop and you, you know, I know how I shop. When I'm looking for something and I type something into the search field, I want to make sure that the places that I'm looking at have good, you know, high five-star reviews, maybe a couple of four-star reviews. So that's something that you need to do to be able to get seen on Google when someone's typing that in. 
The second thing that you want to do is, is make sure that your website is optimized with those same keyword phrases. And all that means is after you've researched who your ideal patients are and maybe what they're shopping for is you set up your website so that you have that kind of content on it. You don't want to just have features. You know, you don't just list all of the tests that you do or the specialties that you do. You want to make sure that you're talking about the benefits that those features do for your patient. Always, always on social media, on your website, when you're posting your blog posts, make sure that you're always imagining that that ideal patient is thinking to themselves, what's in it for me? Always, what's in it for me? So you want to make sure that you're touching their pain points. Make sure that that you're touching, you know, if you've I identified that your ideal patient may be golfers, that's one of the aspects. Make sure that you're talking about the benefits of glasses that are specific to golfers. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a breath here, Marie. If you wanna, if you wanna say anything or ask any questions, or no, you, you got a lot of great okay. points out there. A lot of doctors don't know that they'll, they'll, they'll sometimes just hand off the website information to a company and say, just put up my website, and and then that's fine. And then they think they're done with the website. A website's a lot more. It's, it's a weekly task, daily task. Depends how far you want to move up. And Absolutely. There are a lot of different ways. I mean, it's. Google keeps changing their al algorithm all the time. Yeah. And, and if, if you're not doing that, there's, there's, it's hard to compete, and, but to stay you know, on top of the list where patients are looking for you. But sure, the other sure. thing is too, where doctors say, there's so much competition out there. It's hard to compete nowadays. If, this is a great game changer. This is, if you put in the work, it doesn't matter how much money you have or how much you're investing in the business. If you're putting in the work on Google, you can compete. Absolutely. So crafters, you can compete with the guy. And you can do it. You just have to put the effort into it. And the way that I strategically do my Facebook and my website is I think like the customer, like mm -hmm. the patient would think. What would the patient be searching on the web, right? Um, like you said, golf glasses and things like that. It's like, well, what are they? What are some common diseases that patients know about? Cataracts, they check. Presbyopia. Think about key words that are important. But then I also try to have it for Cranston, Rhode Island. And then also, if you want to do Google Ads, which is we could probably do a whole thing on Google Ads, anyways, um, but that's important too because you, when I do Google, when I just check my competitors, um, if I put in a Warby Parker or a Lens Crafters, other competitors show up in the ads, so they're using sure. they're using these keywords. You have sure. to kind of think like your patients are thinking, and you can get information from your patients on how they're thinking by just asking them, "How did you find us?" Most of them are saying, I found you from doctor near, nearby, affordable glasses, Ray-Bans, contact lenses, whatever the case is. Um, you have to kind of think that route instead of thinking, you know, um, retinal detachment. I mean, there there is a place for that. It depends on the patients you want to attract, but kind of have to think kind of, you know, big picture. Well, absolutely. And, and part of that too is being able to define your unique selling point or proposition, um, as we call it in the marketing industry, is how do you set yourself apart? There's so many optometrists that that haven't even given that any thought, you know, hang up the shingle and, and you know, build it and they will come. And that's just not the way it is anymore. The other thing too is, is you know, the, the way to get up in that three pack is first and foremost, Yes, we are a local business. So you do want to put your city name plus optometrist and plus, you know, eye doctor throughout your site that sounds natural. But then what you want to do to set yourself apart is when you start writing those blog articles that talk about um, what we call, you know, um, um, long tail phrases where you want to get into their, to their ideal patient's mind and think about buyer's intent search phrases. So like you were saying, if someone wants to buy glasses or certain sunglasses, they might type in what's the best type of glasses to wear when golfing, or they might say, how much is a typical pair of golfing glasses? or a typical pair of sunglasses. So you want to start getting in the mind and use these buyer's intent phrases. And it's it's really easy to find those. Actually, you can search for what is a buyer's intent because that's, you know, they first have to find you, but then they also want to start getting information for those kind of products. When you start showing up all the time at the top of Google for those extra blog posts, they're going to start seeing you as an expert in the industry and in the area. So it's really important that you set yourself up that way. And again, define your unique 
proposition or unique position in the community so that you do stand out um, and stand up. The other thing, let me go through a couple of other things that you can do on the website that's important that a lot of optometrists don't know. And sometimes these bigger web design companies don't really talk to the doctor. They just go ahead and do some of these things, but they're not necessarily doing all the things that need to be done. One of one of the things that can be overlooked is make sure that your address, because if you've, if, let me get back, if you've set up the Google My Business, one of the main things they do is they send you a postcard to verify your business. What you need to do is make sure that you're putting your address at the bottom of your every single page of the website. Nowadays, it's easy. Most websites are built on WordPress or some other um, platform that it's easy. You put it somewhere once and it's throughout the rest of the website. Um, you'll actually get, and I'll say this a lot, you'll get penalized by Google, which means Google will either remove you from the index, which means you won't even show up, or they'll push you way back in the search pages. You might be on page five or six. There's no question, it's, it's so important for you to be in the top three. Statistics show that if you're beyond the top three in the listing, when someone types in your city plus eye doctor, most of the time people are not gonna go to you. So you really gotta strive to get there. And again, writing posts, putting that content on your website that you're optimizing for those phrases is vital. The other thing that Google will penalize you is if your website pages load very slowly. The faster your website loads, the happier you're going to make Google. So you want to strive to, to you know, do it as quickly as you can. And you want to also make sure that your mobile version of your website loads quickly. And also that you're not just mobile optimized, but you're mobile friendly, which means when someone's moving around on your phone, on their phones, and they're looking you up, if they land on your website, you want to make sure that your telephone number is a nice big button that that thumb can touch. You don't want it a tiny little link that is really difficult for the, you know, for your phone to know that you're actually pushing on it. So you want it to, you know, everything to load quickly. You want it to be mobile friendly and you want to make sure, like I said, the phone number, you want to make sure whether it's the desktop or the phone that your call to action which typically is your telephone number, is right at the top of the page. First and foremost, easy to find, easy to click on, you know, easy to see. Um, so those are some of the other things. I've got some more, but go ahead and, and if you have any questions or anything. No, I think that's these are all good points, I think. But what is your, I think reviews can kind of move you up in the search engine. Absolutely. I've actually done that. Um, also to save time with staff, um, online appointments, you said call actions, the phone number. Would you also say like book an appointment online to kind of capture that patient, Absolutely. capture Absolutely. their information. Yep. And then also with doctors with what they say, look, I don't have time to do blogs. I don't have time for that. Sure. I'm busy. I'm seeing patients. Like I just want to, maybe I'll pay someone to market it. Sure. And that's fine. You can do that, but you have to make sure you carefully research it because if they're making the a, a same blog for you that they're making for everybody else, right? Google penalizes you. Right. <laughs> Right. They, well, right. big so, time. <laughs> yeah. Right. So you, it's not cookie cutter. That's what the, from right. the beginning. What I was saying was, you, if you put the work in, you will be rewarded from Google. Yes. Right. It, so and it, it is easy to compete on this platform oh, sure. than ever before. Sure. And and don't forget, you may have that employee that's very very savvy on social media that does know exactly what to do. And and you know you could just just talk into your phone, dictate something that you'd like to have typed out, let your team member go ahead and do that for you. You can edit it. It's okay. And then let them do, do that work. If there's some extra time, if there, you know, if you, if you can somehow get an hour a week in where you can just write a blog post once a week, that will help. You know, when you're consistent, you start putting the information up there, either potential patients or patients will start to see that and they'll start to almost expect it. So you know, and I help train for that. I do. That is one of my services. I will help train, you know, your staff to to go ahead and write correctly, write optimized, um, write for search intent. You know, and to your point about the letting somebody else doing the work in more cookie cutter, I find that happens quite often with websites that there are ways to look sort of under the hood, if you will, where you can find out what kind of search engine optimization they're doing on your site. And I have found doctors whose sites have actually had information that the web company forgot to change under the hood. And instead of a Tampa eye doctor, it says a, you know, Orlando eye doctor, because they just forgot to go in there and switch it out. 
Uh, and the other thing that I recommend is, is try to stay away from stock photos. You know, sometimes we all need them. We need to slip them in, but I've seen time and time again, some of these big web design companies are just, even, even the doctor's picture is not actually the doctor that's in the practice. And it, it, you know, it kind of amazes me. It's here's your opportunity. Get that smiling face, right? First and foremost, that's the welcoming doctor. That's well, welcoming, sorry, the patient into their website and into their practice. So why not, you know, have that opportunity right up, right up front. Yeah. I think those are all good points. And then, yeah. So recording it, um, your blog, um, just simple things like it's, it's sure. th things that your patients want to learn about, but also move up. Cause it's again, it's those keywords. So it's doctor in Tampa, Florida, and right. make sure that, you know, your staff knows that and that could be kind of downtime. Uh, for your staff. And after a while, your staff is is pretty educated on what patients are looking for and asking for. It's the same questions over and over again. Sure. Kind of put that blog post. How many words would you recommend for a blog post? You know, they used to, it, it used to be all over the place where, you know, don't put that many and now put at least 200 or 800 or a thousand. And now what they're saying is be conversational and however many words it takes to get the information out there. You also want to make sure that you're getting more information out there than your competitor. So I think that's really the bench post that you want to look for. I know that in the digital marketing world, it's highly competitive. And what a lot of marketers will do is they'll go out and look at, they're, they're not going to steal the blog post, but they're going to look at what a competitor is writing about a certain topic. And then they'll do extra research. They'll go the extra mile. They'll, they'll take the same topic, talk about a lot of the same things. Again, no plagiarizing, but they'll take that information and they'll go five steps further. If, if one marketer says, you know, oh, you should go look this up and do this thing. Well, the person that wants to rank higher will actually tell them that thing. They will go that extra mile just to make sure that, that you know, think of it as you want to be in the visitor's shoes. What would I want to know if I'm typing in this topic and I have, you know, 10 different items that show up on the first page, I want to look for something that's going to answer my question completely, not just make me feel like I want more or that I have to pay for an extra course to get more. I'm really going to appreciate the person that gives me all of the information. Yeah. So I think that that's important because if, if, if your competitors in the area do one blog a month and you're doing three, you will surpass them, right? Absolutely. You're doing that, sure. doing reviews, um, you're, you know, doing things to cross brand on, on, on Facebook, on your Instagram, whatever your channel is for, sure. for marketing as well, those blogs. Um, so that's important. So it's shareable, right? Right. Um, absolutely. Those are yep. very important. And then you can kind of move up to do that. And if you're a new practice, you know, you could be doing that on your own time. Now, well, another thing was too, in the past, Google has been very receptive to videos. Oh, absolutely. What I mean, a lot of docs don't do that, but I mean, just to take a 30 second video to talk about the same spiel you do every day when you tell your patients about cataracts or dry eye. How does there, that yeah. Up? There is such a huge opportunity in the video world. And as I always tell my clients, first of all, you know, I'll ask the question, what's the number one search engine? Of course, everybody knows it's Google. And then I'll ask them, what's the number two search engine? They usually say Bing or Yahoo, and it's not, it's YouTube. And then I'll ask, well, who owns YouTube? Well, Google owns YouTube. So Google absolutely loves it. When you go ahead and upload a video to YouTube, and then there's just a little piece of code, very easy to copy, and you embed that back into your website. So you now have a blog post. And, and again, we could go on and on with this, but Google appreciates it. I'm talking as though Google's a person, but Google appreciates it when your blog post has a singular topic that you go deep. You don't go wide, but you go deep with the topic. If you can include a video that talks about that same topic, put it right into the blog post. You're pointing the blog post to YouTube and in the YouTube description, you're pointing back to the blog post. You're giving Google pretty much a double whammy. So anytime that you can do that, I would recommend it. Always include an instructional video, how to, you know, anything that's going to help your, your patient or prospective patient learn something and see you as an expert in the industry. So you're going to get all kinds of kudos from, from Google, not only, you know, telling your patients all these wonderful things that you can educate them on. 
question for you. So are you uploading the video to YouTube and then put saying the YouTube link on your website? Or are you also putting that video on your website as well? And then a separate video on, on YouTube. Good question. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll actually do, I'll do, I won't do the native video I'll put on social media because all of the social media platforms do not, do not, do not want you to leave their platform to go somewhere else, especially go to YouTube. So when you take the video, I don't upload it necessarily natively to my blog post because that's almost a waste. Google mm -hmm. loves it when you take their own product, which is a YouTube video and embed it right into the page. So I do both. I'll actually grab the link, but there's also the embed code. And again, if the doctors don't want to learn how to do that, I can teach them how to do it. But if they don't want to do it, they just turn that over to their web designer and say, you know, here's my blog post go ahead and add the the embed code. And what happens is it shows up as the regular YouTube video right from your blog post. They don't even have to leave your blog post to go to YouTube. If they click on the play button, it'll stay right inside your page. Oh, so exactly. again, you, you, you get great benefit. And again, optimize, we could spend some more time too on just optimizing your YouTube channel and your YouTube videos, your individual YouTube videos um, on another topic. Yeah, I also think I like thinking outside the box here. So if, if you have, if, if you want to get to know the community to know you, right, and then personality wise and, and how you, so it's like a first impression, right? Yeah. Videos. So if you're taking over another doctor's practice or a doctor retired, this might be a good way to kind of e-blast their patients and say, hi, I'm Dr. Sampalas. I just took over this practice. We just added this to the practice. Just kind of think outside the box. And that can also be on the front of your website too. Absolutely. Patients kind of go to your website to see if they're the, you're the doctor want to see. But also I think just to show that, you know, you're, you're open to conversation, you're very easy to communicate with, um, you know, you're there, you're inviting per se. I mean, people, they want to get to know you. I mean, they, this is kind of a good way to do it outside the box instead of kind of going through the community. It's, this is a fast way to grow. It's the, it's the fastest way to take what we call in the industry, cold traffic, someone who's never seen you have no idea who you are to warm traffic where they may have heard about you, seen your picture somewhere, or maybe caught a video to hot traffic, which is they're either your patient or they're about to be your patient. It's the fastest direct line to take someone who's never seen you to liking you, to knowing, liking, and trusting you is to get in front of them with video. Immediately, there's either a connection or there's not, you know, but it, but it's, it's, it, they feel like they know you. They, and, and within seconds, somebody feels like they know you. And I still do not see a lot of local optometrists doing that. You know, the, I think a lot of them are still stuck in the, let me just get an ad on TV. I mean, that's just so, so expensive. Old time. Well, and expensive. And, you know, and again, I guess it, it probably depends on your demographic and where they're hanging out. Are they just watching TV? Then, of course, you want to be in front of them that way. But to be able to not spend any money, get videos on your website, drive your social media traffic to it, drive if you want to spend a little bit of money, do some Facebook ads. It's really easy to do ads to local uh, businesses, even, you know, even though I know things have changed recently with the Apple um, shifts. I don't know if you've heard about that, but, but still it's just, it's the fastest way to be able to put yourself in front of someone and immediately attract the people that like what you're talking about. So I, I'm, I'm, I, I drive that home all the time, how important video is. Oh, that's, that's great support. It's a great point. Um, so one thing I want to ask you about, cause I've talked to a lot of doctors, they'll say, I'm trying to get all new, I'm marketing to get all new patients and that's great. Right. right? Yeah. But the cheapest way is the established patients you already have. So e-blast things like that. And these are all things you can repurpose for new patients and for your own thing, because Absolutely. they can say, you can do a video, you can do a blog post and say, we just added a retinal camera per se. Right. And then we can check for glaucoma, diabetic retinopathy, all these things. And then the patient gets it and says, oh, you know, my friend, you know, just got diagnosed. They need a die doctor, let's say. So you're always fresh in their mind, right? Sure. So you're also, besides that, you're building your personal brand. And you're always fresh in their mind. Because there's so many distractions out there in the industry and, 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 and people in the community where they're getting information from competitors online, wanting to contact, whatever the case is. And you want to be there. So you kind of want to do that, too, to kind of remind them. Hey guys, I'm your eye doctor. Uh, I'm providing value. This is what I'm doing. This is why you need to continue to see me. Um, so that was the kind of other things that are important too. All this stuff you're not just doing once; it's easily repurposed. Oh easily my gosh! Yeah, yeah. So and there's a whole. Are easy for you to just redo 
It doesn't yeah. have to be doesn't it doesn't have to be movie or anything like that. It it, it just it's just information. They're they're coming in to see the information and it, maybe it can be done within a no show or something like that. Like it's 30 second video, quick, easy. A blog post, something you're maybe you're stuck in traffic and you're just recording it and you just the idea comes and then the secretary types it up and you clean it up. It doesn't have to be Shakespeare. It's more no. XCO, you know, Cranston, Rhode Island, you know, optometrist, you know, those are things that, you know, is important. Um, and these are all things that you can kind of, you know, use to your advantage to get new patients during downtime. And for me personally, I've seen a lot of success um, in Google with, with getting people to rate you, right? Um, you know, when they rate you, people usually don't, doctors don't comment, right? But that right. can move you to the search engine as well because, you know, your activity in that and the Google place and all that. People usually respond when it's negative, which you want to regardless. But I think that's important too. Am I right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I tell that was one of the things that I was thinking about for tonight is absolutely respond to every single review. Of course, we have to make sure we're HIPAA compliant when we do that. But um absolutely you want to do the positive because it you almost you get this feeling like the doctor really cares you know they really care about keeping us happy uh i think too to your point it's really important i think it's it, it's so easy to get complacent when you have patients and you have you know all your files and you you know hey i think all my patients are going to keep coming back to me well no we know how insurance undercutting certain fees and whatnot that that patients can go but if you're constantly on their mind that you are the eye care provider that has all of these extra specialties we, we may forget in the exam room or we may forget as a as a team out in the optical to mention that oh by the way we have this other thing that we do oh by the way polarized sunglasses are great for golfing or you know all of these other things or, or you know we do vision therapy i heard you mention that your son's having trouble at school and and he sees fine but let's talk some more about what it really could be and when we forget to do that we've you know we get busy and we're doing our thing let's put out these videos. Let's go ahead and, and remind our current patients that these are some other things that we do, or we just added this specialty. So it's important to stay top of mind. And I think there's a, I actually wrote a post about it recently, a blog post about it, that it's absolutely staggering how, how much more money you pay for new patients. And if you just retain a patient, you know, how much money you actually make profit wise or, you know, how you sustain. So it, you know, we know it's important to treat our patients well, but when you go above and beyond and do just those few extra things to keep them informed, they feel like they've been treated well and that they're being treated special versus somebody up the street who's just trying to get them out in and out the door very quickly. So. Yeah. I mean, it is a lot of money to get a new patient in the door, but try to keep them there as well. And, and if they're just there because of their vision plan and what's covered, or they're just there to get a script and you wasted all this money per se online to attract this patient where you know that Mr. Smith is a, is a loyal patient, all his patients, all his uh, family comes, right. it's important, right? Absolutely. Now, one other thing I know is, you know, we'll talk about websites, but some doctors will do some Google ads with their websites or Facebook and they'll say, I did it and didn't get anything out of it. I didn't get any patients. Well, it's kind of a big approach, right? It's sometimes you get it. Sometimes people aren't looking, but I think if you're looking for patients right now that need glasses per se, or eye exams, it's probably on Google when they search. Sure. Uh, you know, Facebook is a good way to kind of get your brand out there information. Um, and you kind of want to have them get to uh, the patients to like your page as well. Um, because it's also a kind of free way to advertise, right? Right. Um, to get them to do that. Right. And, and too, just to, to, for folks out there that don't realize really the difference when, when you're advertising on Google, remember it's typically search intent. When someone's typing into Google, they are looking for something. They are looking for a place to go, um, something to buy. When you're advertising on Facebook, it's more of a disruptive kind of advertising. They weren't even thinking about looking for an eye doctor or looking for a pair of sunglasses. It's just all of a sudden the advertisement pops up. And again, people are, are getting more and more picky about appreciating that. Again, I think that's why Apple made the change that they made about privacy. So it, it's important wherever you're spending your money to think about 
what, you know, where do I want to spend my dollars? It's not bad to do it in either place, but just remember what's, what's the intent? Who are you going after when you're putting your money behind, you know, these different places? And that's why, again, I mentioned, you know, because we're a local demographic, you do want to have those location plus, you know, the words for who you are, but you also want to have the buyer's search intent as we talked about earlier. So important. Yeah. So Google is very important. I, um, like you said, um, anything else you want to tell us about to kind of help us with our websites? Cause a lot of doctors are not taking advantage of, of, of information or, or strategy. You know, I think it's really important. I, it, really take a good audit, try to, to either uh, enlist someone that, that knows you, but has never been to your website and ask them where they're finding the difficulties. Ask them if it's clear, do they really understand what makes you special? Like I mentioned earlier, the, that unique point that you, you know, that you provide, but, but is your message clear? You know, I've gone to so many sites where they take, they just take it for granted. Well, I'm an eye doctor. You know, you come for me for an eye exam. Yeah. But how is the experience different for the patient? Why are you the better person to come to? Why would I come to you if, if the guy up the street has the same insurance company um, or insurance plan? So, so it's really important to make sure that all your messaging is clear. All your messaging is about the patient, not about you. Yes. You have to put their credentials and the about and, and make you stand out in that respect. But but first and foremost, why would a patient come to you? What's in it for them? Uh, and just do an audit. Just look through each page. Try to see if everything makes sense. Is it coherent? Like you said, personal branding, you know, do, does, does, you know, branding people will think it's just about the colors or it's just about, hey, look at my business card or the logos. That's not what branding is. Branding is what other people perceive of you. So, survey your favorite patients, ask them why they came to you, like you said earlier, but ask them what keeps them there. Ask them what it is about you that, that, you know, made you stand out. How do they perceive you, the practice and your staff? Is it in alignment with the information that you're putting out? You might think you're, you know, the sort of casual, you know, kind of doctor and you just, you know, you just want to keep that um, kind of perception or branding when in reality they look at you as a very professional doctor and that's why they come to you. So, you, so you, everything that you put out there, the language that you use when you're doing blog posts or newsletters, um, the social media, you want to, you want to sort of align it now with how they perceive you. Also, you don't want to be inauthentic, but it may just be that you're, you, you really are that kind of a personality. So, Try to get that branding in alignment and make sure it is across all of your platforms, your website, your social media, et cetera. So, Am I correct in saying that having that alignment is called omni-channel experience? Everything's the same, right? So. Yeah. Well, I, I think that's the technical word for it when you're describing the technical of it. But branding in and of itself is also a feeling. It's not yeah. just what you're doing with all of that stuff. It's actually how you're presenting yourself. And it, it even comes down to how does the front desk, you know, person greet the patients? Is that in alignment with your mission, vision, and values? Uh, and, and have you articulated that with your team? So that you all, you know, it's important. important. I can't, I'm yeah. sorry to correct you. No, that is no, really important because you're seeing the patient 15 minutes sometimes. Yeah. And sometimes staff interacts with them three, four, five times a year. They're not sure. aligned. If they're not this, it's it affect your business completely. They Absolutely. make or break your business. Absolutely, so that, that could be a whole different topic. Itself. It is. So, it is. Yeah. 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 So, awesome. um, coming close here to the end of the of this Facebook Live, I want to uh, thank for those of you that watched. Um, we'll obviously have it um, recorded so people can watch again if they choose to. Um, if you guys want to contact Dr. Sandy, uh, kissyourweb at gmail.com. What other services do you offer? Uh, so you, sure. you want to so, contact And I've just recently put the page up. It's uh, kissyourweb.com forward slash book Sandy. Basically what I do is hourly consulting. Um, if you have any technical questions, any marketing questions, if I can't answer it, I will find the answer for you. But I basically just have you fill out a form, a very quick form and say what kind of issues you'd like to discuss. I have a lot of, um, people that have said that if they just had a live person, just go over something with my website. I just can't get an answer. My web designer won't talk to me for three weeks. So yeah. if there's just any kind of those, I love software. I love video editing. I love uh, website design, um, again, marketing. So any questions that you might have, I would love to get uh, on a call 
and just help you usually right in the moment. I'll, I'll pull up, you know, the screen and we'll do a screen share and a screen capture. And then I record it for, um, for you and, uh, you'll have it as a reference. Yeah. I think you're a great reference. You're an optometrist. You. you kind of, you know how to do it. Um, and you're helping optometrists do it themselves. It's not just, we're going to do it right. for you, charge you a, a big amount. You're educating optometrists for success and how this field of marketing keeps changing. It does. Um, Dr. Sandy's on top of it. And, um, I've kind of, I've learned a lot from her as well. And uh, that's why I wanted her on this Facebook live as well. And, and I'll probably have her in on again because we get a lot of um, good feedback from it. So good. Thank you. Always Thanks fun. You have a great time. Thank you. Bye-bye everybody.